Well, I think like everybody, um, I've known the Hammer brand my whole life. <laughs> I think I grew up with Hammer Films um, at the cinema. Uh, I read about Hammer Films. I went to see all night horror shows when I was in my teens and so on. So I think the Hammer, Gra Hammer brand has been in my life forever. Uh, the idea of being associated with it is, is just a thrill actually, because it's so iconic and everybody's heard of it and everyone has a sort of an idea of what it is. Um, and um, and so to be part of an sort of expansion of that idea through these books is, is actually very lovely. I'll start by saying that it's very hard to talk about this book without giving anything away, but it's a comic gothic novella and it concerns uh, a mystery about a missing woman and its main uh, interest, I think, main focus is a talking cat called Roger um, and another cat called the Captain. So it's, uh, it's a rather preposterous premise. Uh, the inspiration was first that I was asked to write a book for Hammer, for the Hammer imprint, and I thought that I'd like to write something about talking cats. Um, and possibly that was because, uh, having had cats for a long time in my life, I did have some rather sinister ones that I got as rescue cats. They didn't make a sound, they used to stare at me, big green eyes and um, and if you tried if I tried to be nice to them they'd just slash me so I did think actually I, I think possibly it was my revenge on those rescue cats that I wrote Cat Out of Hell. When I had cats that were actually really quite nice uh, I did used to feel rather defensive when people said that cats were evil uh, and they really didn't like them I'd say well look at this lovely puss um, what, could, what could be wrong with that? But I think always in my heart of hearts, I did know that cats aren't very nice. I think it's just not very nice. They, are, they look after themselves. And when I wrote about them a lot, it was actually quite from a, a sort of um, masochistic kind of standpoint. You know, it was always about how while I looked after my cats, they didn't really care uh, what I did. And, uh, you know, while I was writing, they were just eating the friskies. You know, they, were, they, were, they got, knew what they were getting out of it. So I have, I had, I've always been in two minds. I've always understood that one could take a cynical approach to cats. Uh, when I finally acquired a dog, I realised where I'd been going wrong all these years having cats because, you know, dogs are nice. Dogs are really nice. They really, really like you. Um, Cat Out of Hell could not have been written with a dog in the role of Roger the Evil Cat because no dog possibly behave the way that Roger the Evil Cat behaves. Um, dogs just don't have it in them, really, to plot. <laughs> and, they, um, and they generally, you know, you look into the eyes of a dog and you look for badness there, and I don't think you can see it. Uh, I, my favourite horror author is M.R. James, and um, it is, I think he's many people's favourite horror author. He's very English, he's very, um, he's very traditional, in a way. And a lot of his stories have been adapted for screen uh, in the 70s, 80s, I think. They were, they were traditionally done at Christmas. There are famous ones such as Oh Whistle and I'll Come to You, My Lad, and um, the casting of the runes and so on. And they're often about people who are historians or archaeologists or something who, who summon up something from the past and it's, it's very dreadful and horrible and involves sort of something disgusting, <laughs> usually disgusting. It's often unspeakably disgusting, which is very clever of M.R. James because he never has to describe anything. He'll just say, it was unbelievably horrible. And you just believe that without, uh, without any, any uh, actual description in it. So I think he's, he's quite an important uh, inspiration for me. But I also have read a lot of old traditional Gothic Gothic novels as well, and I really love, say, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, and I really love Dracula as well by Bram Stoker. So um, even though they are known more through films, the actual books are sensational. I have to say, I don't look for sensation and scariness in books and films. I tend to, I tend to steer away from things that I think are going to frighten me these days. I think when I was younger, I would go and see all night horror shows and so on. Um, but mostly, I've got such a strong imagination. My imagination has such a power over me that I protect it. I protect it from a lot of horrible, horrible things. 
Um, what was interesting writing the book was how far to allow myself to imagine horrible things and then also whether asking myself whether it was morally right to pass on anything that I found frightening to other people because I didn't want to hurt their imaginations. So I, you know, obviously that uh, doesn't make me a much of a natural horror, horror writer, but it's been fascinating for me to do to, to open that door a little um, and to make myself scared while I was writing the book.